Hey, hey, what's happening, YouTubers? It's your boy CB, and we are back for my favorite segment on the channel, Huddle Watch Alongs with Recruits. On today's episode, for you guys that like defense and defensive backs, for you ball hawks out there, I got a special treat for you. 2025 four-star cornerback from American Heritage, so you know he come from a popular pipeline, a strong pipeline that is used to developing stars at the next level and he is the next one in that line tall lanky physical ball skills out the wazoo because he's a former receiver which is a very interesting conversation that i can't wait to get into but you don't want to hear me tell it you want to hear it from the star himself so without further ado one of the baddest dbs in the class from american heritage four star cornerback zay thomas what's happening bro what's up what's up i i like the i like the intro Hey man, look, I had to I had to come with the fitting intro because I'm looking at the list of 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 offers and what you've accomplished this year. And I was like, all right, let me let me make sure the intro is up to par because you're coming off of a, not just a strong year team wise because obviously that always comes first. Strong year from the team, strong year from you, someone who was always in the back of everyone's mind. Like, hey, how come they not not? not not highly rated and then i feel like the publications caught up this year i feel like no matter where you turn you on social media now i scroll and i'm like oh sec school again <laughs> like so from your perspective what, what what has this year been like for for you not just a success on the field but in your recruiting as well uh it's, it's been a lot you know um, uh stuff that i prepared for though you know like you said before I, I was kind of in the shadow of people. I had a lot of people in front of me, you know, like four star Damari Brown. Damari like, Brown, people yeah. Like, uh, people like Fagan, uh, Jacoby Spells, a whole bunch of four or five star corners in front of me. So Dogs. it's it's kind of like the the process at Heritage. It's how we call it. And, you know, you got to wait your turn. But while you're waiting, it's not just about waiting. You have to put that work in and grind so that when your time does come, you have a year like I had this year. And, you know. Did you know going into this year? Because obviously, again, you, you studied behind these other guys. Did you have that confidence coming into this year knowing, all right, I put in the work. I, I've been mentored by dudes that have done this at that level. I'm in practice with all these. I got to sit here and guard Malachi Tony every week in practice. So did you know coming into this year, like, all right, it's my time to shine. I just, all I need is an opportunity. And I felt like being where you are, there's no weeks off. You play four or five star receivers every single week and you got that that time to shine. Did you know going into the year like, ah, uh, I'm about to turn up? Uh, for sure, for sure. I I um yeah, definitely. I think <laughs> <laughs> I love that though. You gotta have that confidence in yourself. Yeah, I think that's one of the most important things, especially playing DB, you know, having confidence. If one of my I feel like Going into this year, something I really needed to work on was a lot of people said I didn't look confident playing. So getting that confidence and showing it on the field, that's something that I felt, you know, made me ready. And the seven-on-seven seven season before this season that just passed, you know, I got a lot of reps um, playing against top guys. So that kind of gave me um, a lot of work, a lot of uh, in-game speed type stuff to get used to. Speak to how important that is, because I think that goes unnoticed sometimes because people look at seven on seven and say, well, you could pick up bad tendencies, but you could also get good reps. You out there and man going against somebody five star receiver yeah. and, and and you in South Florida, bro. So let's we, we know what it's like out there at receiver. Ain't no reps off. How much did seven on seven help you evolve as a DB headed into this year? I would say it definitely helped. I am. Um... We played the seven on seven team I played for. We played straight man, so oh, you, know, nice. I, I, like, it you was gotta no, get it. Yeah, it was no running away. It's either you had to cover or you were gonna get beat, and obviously they want to get beat. So I just had to. They kind of threw me in, and I just had to, you know, work. I love that. That's that South Florida style where all y'all DBs for some reason y'all just grow up in man on an island. You're used to being on the other side of that before playing DB full time, though. What was that transition like for you going from a two way player to saying, all right, I'm going to primarily focus on DB? Um, it was. It was kind of something that was natural to me because my whole life I, I, I trained at both. I didn't necessarily play both positions, but I always trained at DB. Any training I'll go Smart. to 
I, I trained and I did both. So I feel like I, I kind of had like an idea. Like I, I knew, I knew what I had to do at DB. It wasn't like I'm just starting over at a new position and also going into DB playing receiver. It gives you, like, you can look at things from a receiver's perspective. Yep. It just helps, you know, uh, it helps. I feel like that's what kind of helped me in zone a lot. You know, I see things um, different. The plays come out before it happens or route combinations and stuff like that, that you pick up from offense and bring over to defense. You know what he trying to do. You like, oh, that head fake not real. I know what you're doing <laughs> with that head fake, fam. I used to do that. Like, you, 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 you just, you got a little bit of a cheat code. It's when you see a receiver start, you like, he cheating way too far inside. He not running this post. It's post corner. He not, he not, he not that crazy to be lined up that far inside. He not. It's just you get a look. You you probably look at the game a lot different too. And I would imagine that that helped that evolution because while you were still learning to be confident at the position, you could lean on other aspects of the game. Like, all right, I may not be confident here, but. When I see a certain route combination, I know I could jump that because I I know what he's trying to do to me. He 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 may not know I know, but I ran that route. So if it was me, you know what I mean about to run this route. This is what I would I would do. So this is what I know what to look out for. Yeah, de- definitely, definitely. I feel like it it just it helps it helps a lot with kind of getting like like you said earlier, getting comfortable. You know, it it, it just I don't know. It, it just helps mentally, and and it's, it's it slows that, it slows the game down a lot too. You that. know, that's a big thing. Uh, it, it, you know, when you're in the game, you don't it, the game. It's a fast game. Football is a fast game, but the yeah. more you can slow it down and you know see things happen, it just makes it much, that much easier. Do you remember that moment for you on the field where it really felt like it slowed down for you for the first time? Yes, I remember that exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dope feeling because you like everybody slow like oh shit. like <laughs> mm-hmm. this is because you just you feel so in sync so before we get into the tape i'm a list person for those of y'all that are wondering like what do you mean by blew up this season florida state miami penn state pitt purdue tennessee texas A&M, west virginia duke lsu there's one that if i don't ask you about my comment section is going to go crazy <laughs> One of the homes, one of the hometown schools. What was it like when you got that 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 scholarship offer from Miami? Uh, it was a great feeling. It was it was my second offer, so that's, that's and that's it, awesome in its own. Yes, sir, it definitely was, and it was. I had actually got the offer at a seven on seven camp. Oof. Oh, you must have cooked at that camp, man. Yeah, <laughs> you so, must have absolutely cooked at that camp. Yeah, it was. A, I I had a good camp. Uh, we had um. It was with the uh, with our school that we were playing with, so it was American Heritage, Central, a whole bunch of teams like that. And the first game, you know, we, the first game we actually ended up playing Central. And I, had uh, I was from, I was about to say because you them for for people in the comments, they they know the receivers when you start listing off this team. Like, oh, so he had to play against Weezy early. He had to. Like, yeah, okay. I, I actually followed him that whole game and I let him know catches and I caught an interception. And after that, I think that just caught the attention of all the coaches and Coach Cristobal. And they came up and talked to me after that. And then they just had their eyes on me for the rest of the day. And at the end of the camp, they told me they wanted to offer me. So it was it was a great feeling. What was that? What was that first interaction like with Coach Cristobal? It was it was surprising. I kind of expected him to be a little bit different. <laughs> really? How so? Uh, I don't know. It just, <laughs> it's just a different like picture in my brain. What about a die? Because, you know, I feel like when we talk to players about a die and when I talk to recruits, they get a different side than what social media sees. Social media sees a dude that looks like he all business. He don't laugh. And then every time I talk to a DB, they like, oh, nah, he's super cool. What's that relationship like with Coach Adai? Yes, sir. Coach Adai, he's, he's cool. He, you know, he he was one of the coaches that was talking to me the most when I was at that camp. And, you know, he introduced me to all the other coaches. And so yeah, coach at high school. That 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 relationship with DB coaches now, that fan base ain't gonna like this question, but I'm asking it anyway. The other hometown school as well. You get the FSU offer too. That obviously had to be another one that was like, all right, the big three here, they knocking at the door. What was it like when they came calling as well? 
that was that was a great feeling too. You know, my my old head coach, Coach Pat Sertain, he is a DB coach there. So it's a bad dude. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he he was just he was it was a great feeling. He let me know I had actually went up there for two camps over the summer, and okay. I I did really good. This was before my name was kind of out there. I was still building my a name for myself, and that had I feel like that kind of put me on the map. You know, I was guarding a lot of top receivers, and um. I, I, you know, I was doing pretty good that camp, and all the coaches had let me know after that camp they liked what they saw. They were talking to me. I had some um, people ask me, you know, just ask me who I was because at the time nobody really knew. And that had to be a good feeling too. Like, hey, who is that? Yeah, I, no, no joke. And I think I told you this. I was watching one of y'all's games, and I was like, "Yo, who is number two? I, that that's that's legit how I found you that I was like and then you you ended up having a pick and I was like hey who is this dude I would imagine coach Sertan probably get that a lot because y'all churn them out at American Heritage and for some reason y'all all like wearing somewhere around the same number so these <laughs> these coaches probably looking at Sertan like bro how many of these dudes do you really have and for those of y'all that are wondering like all right CB I I I, I know Damari. I know there's DBs in Florida. What are you talking about? I'm about to show you. We, we talking about a, a young man that told you he needed to learn confidence on the field. He and somebody grill right now that's five-star receiver in his grill. How much do you enjoy these matchups, bro? Uh, I love them. It's, it gives me an opportunity to – it's, it's kind of like a chess match, you know, being on being one-on-one with the receiver and – on you know every it was I think it was trips and it was one receiver on my side so it's it's just exciting to see what's gonna happen. Then we 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 play that absolutely textbook. No space to throw that football goes for a back shoulder does not work pick. Yeah. Now this... for 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 those not understanding how big of a game this is right this is. <laughs> This is Florida State versus Miami at a high school level. This is <laughs> this is a massive game. What was it like coming up with a big play like this in a game where you knew going into this game, look, I'm facing two five-star receivers and every other four-star they got in that lineup is is go time. What was it like to show up on a big stage like this and perform? Um it was it was a lot, you know, going into that week our, our game the our game the week before this game had got canceled. So we had extra time to focus on this game. Um, I was just, I was really, I, I, I think I had watched like four hours of film that week. It was, I was, <laughs> I was really lost <laughs> into this game. And I just knew that, like I, I knew I was, I was telling myself all week, a play is going to come my way. I just have to make it. Uh, I just have to make the play when it happens. And actually, I want to say it was the second play of the game. I was at safety. Because our, our original plan was I was going to be at safety over top of uh, Jeremiah oh. Smith. But some things, something happened. Uh, one of our corners had went down, and I had to go back to corner. But this, I, I want to say it was the second play of the game. A pass had got tipped over the middle, and nobody really saw it, but the ball was, like, right in front of me. But it's it's second play of the game, and I'm like, that was the play. Like, I like that was a chance. So, But I knew I was going to get another chance. I just had to capitalize. And. Uh, it was it was great, and we had we had rep this all week. We knew Shamanad, and I had went over it with my safety. They loved the they loved the back shoulder balls, the back shoulder fade. So I was telling him I was gonna play that back shoulder as long as he stays over top, and um, completely yeah. took that away. Yes, sir. Just absolutely completely took that away. As a former receiver, how bad do you want to get this ball into the end zone, bro? When this got in your hands, <laughs> I wanted. To say, I really should have kept running straight. I I just uh, uh, I I really wish I could. <laughs> Is that you? You hear it a lot from from former receivers that play DB. That drives y'all so much that I want to score again. That ability, it probably is what drives you on plays like this. When you when you jump a route, at what point does do you start seeing the end zone? Is it the second you start jumping the route? You start looking. The it's, it's the second I see that quarterback looking, <laughs> turn his shoulder. I was like, oh yeah, this I, I we get gone. To that. Hope, hopefully, or not hopefully, I will next year be taking these back to, to the end zone. Um, but that this is film study. This is film study and route recognition. Yes, sir. 
how yes, how big is you four hours to prepare for a game? How big is film study a part of your your development? Obviously, it's a massive part. If you understand, look, I got a game this week. I got to show up for four hours of film. Where's that work ethic come from, bro? Um, I would say just you know, my dad. He at a young age, he instilled in me that you know, if I want to be if I want to be good, I got to put the work in. And I wasn't always, I wasn't always 6'2", 190. <laughs> so I was actually kind of, I was actually smaller than a lot of people. So, but I knew that one thing I had to do was to work and eventually the work is going to pay off. So there, that week, I just, I just knew if I really applied myself fully this week and get, gave it my all, then something good will happen. That's why you don't know how big you are. Fam, you 6'2 now. You just, you don't, in your heart, you not 6'2. You, you 6'2 <laughs> now, bro. <laughs> that, so what I love about that is you can see that a lot of guys can say, like, I, I love film. I, I, I got to dedicate myself to being ready. But you see that on your film. Watch you diagnose this play, completely come off. That, that's preparation that's preparation and instincts that's you being ready before they even had this play called yes sir how much does your defensive coordinator and your db coach stress that that kind of work ethic in the classroom at home to prepare for a game um they preach it every day you know it's something you you can't have your mind fully focused on a game and what you have to do on the field if you're not taking care of what you're taking what you're supposed to take care of off the field in the classroom or at home so it's something that they they stress a lot. You using your length as well too. That transition from receiver to playing DB full time. How long did it take you to adapt to realizing I got I got long arms out here. I need to start using these a bit more. Um. Well, actually, when I in my my DB trainer, Coach Joe, I I trained with Goldfeet and um, Coach Joe. He, in training, he would always tell me. Um, I, I I would be doing a drill and I would have to catch a ball and I would just stick my arm out there and I would have long arms and he would say um, you know you're lucky that you got long arms but you can't always rely on that so it's something that I knew I always had but um, I, I guess I kind of started using it to my advantage if that makes sense and here completely fighting through the play we, we hear a high motor with defensive linemen all the time but for a DB2, the play is not over till it's over. Sometimes you have to fight through the catch. Never giving up on a ball. That physicality, that, that's the part of your game that I'm like, you don't scream former receiver when you watch you. Did you just always enjoy the physicality side of the game? Um, I guess. I guess so. I, I Going, playing Little League and, you know, my whole football, I played kind of every position. I played safety, receiver, tight end linebacker, running back. So I guess it was just kind of is something in me, I guess. I don't know. That's that. Again, that's South Florida. Y'all just they, – they had y'all playing everywhere. They had you playing at tight end? Yeah. When, my first couple of years of football, I'm pretty sure I played tight end. That, that versatility, too, you could tell it translates to defense. You said it earlier. You were planning to play safety against Shabanan. Is that something you're going to do a lot more going into next year, be moved around a bit more on the defense? Yes, sir. What I, do you I, prefer? Because a lot of times it looked like they had you like, hey, Zay, their number one receiver is him. That's you all game. Don't ask us for nothing. Do you like that? Or do you like when you're moved around or for you, does it matter? It it doesn't really matter. Whoever you put in front of me, I, if I got to co cover him, I got to cover him. You know, That's it's, what I'm talking about. It's – uh. It's good to follow that, that number one receiver, but um, it was really whoever's in front of me. I just got to get covered for that play. This technique, your technique being this smooth, who do you attribute that to? You said you work with gold feet outside of football, outside of Heritage. Obviously, you got your coach, your DB coach at Heritage, but your technique, your back pedal, your speed turns, absolutely silky smooth. Who do you credit that to? I would say... I would say my dad. He um in in every training I go to, he's he's always on me about the little things. I could do something fine, and the coaches would say it's fine, but my dad would be there. No, you didn't. Nah, that's do, how my didn't dad do that. was too. I I love that because yeah. I know what that's like. Yes, sir. So it's it's something kind of just in my head. It's I always gotta be perfect on the little things. And what I'm talking about with speed turning, that 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 ability to be that smooth 
with that transition. So, Pops, let's dive into this because I, I love hearing you say that and you light up when you talk about them. Obviously, not just your hero in your life, but your mentor as well. How has it been having that relationship, obviously, to go home and be a hey, that I, I'm, I'm trying to do this. This ain't working. How, how has he been at, as a part of your evolution and your journey, not just as a father, but as a mentor as well? Uh, it's been great. You know, he's he's always there. Uh, he anytime I need something, he, he always provides it. He he helps me in any way he can. He you know, he tries to teach me different things uh, every day. And he just he he sacrifices a lot and does a lot for me. So it's been great. To just have him there. No, I can always rely on him. And, I yeah. love that. I absolutely love that, bro. Because there's a lot of people that's a part of our journey. We've heard you mention them throughout while we're while we're watching here. It's your DB coaches. It's your head coach. It's the players you play with. It's the guys that you sat behind and watch. But it's also the people at home as well. I think sometimes people watch recruits and they forget how much y'all sacrifice to be great at this game. Yes, how sir. much outside of work the seven on seven the camps the working out with personal trainers having that support at home that means the world because when you feel that support you feel like you can actually do anything because you know if you slip you know if you fall you like man pops where where did i mess up there you know without a doubt he's gonna he's not telling you something to blow smoke up your if he gonna tell you something hey this is why you did this this is why you didn't do this Having that confidence in somebody at home that you can rely on, that is huge. And I love that you recognize that, too. As a as a daddy's kid, like my father's my Superman, too. I love that the second you started talking about him, you lit up because you could tell he's probably yeah. the hardest on you. Definitely. That, definitely. That, that it's for a reason. It'll all pay off in the long run. But yeah. I love that y'all had. How competitive are y'all like? Very, if y'all about to like, if y'all whip out a checkers board, like, is it is it chaos? Yes, sir. In, anytime it's in, anytime anything, you know, he tells me to do something on the field. I want I want to see you do. It. I want <laughs> it's, to. It's, it's it's very competitive, but it's good. It's 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 good for both of us. I feel like I absolutely love that. So I like to ask players their why. What what is it that drives Zay Thomas when? When you soar, tired, you still got to wake up at six in the morning, get your running and your lifting in. What is that why in the back of your mind that drives you? Just that it'll all pay off later. Like I know when the times where I don't want to work, the times where I'm, I'm tired, I'm sleepy, I, I don't feel like working, I'm sore. There's other people that feel just like that and they're not going to do anything about it. But if I go and I put that work in, that's, that's, what, give, that's, that's what gives me my edge and um, tells me to be how I am today and be better tomorrow. My dad used to say one day better. He would tell me every day you take a day off, somebody out there just got one day better than you. It used to annoy me to no end, but it makes sense. Every, every, every day you decide, ah, nah, somebody else just decided, bro, Zay was locking me up last year. Like I got to figure out how to get open. Yes, so it, it's, it's, it's like you had just mentioned there. It, it's kind of that too, you know. People, I'm, I'm, I'm the big name now, so I know people are gonna try to come after me. So I, I have to put extra work in because the people that I covered last year, they're gonna come back and want to try to beat me. So I just, I was just about to ask you that. Is yeah. it, is your mindset different? Like, ha has it changed the way you have to approach coming into next year versus last year, where you can still catch some people by surprise? Obviously, the more the season went on. You're, you're, you're picture in locker rooms and they watching film on you now. Yes, is sir. it different though, approaching it? Cause you even said you came into this season, like a sniper, like they have no idea. They got, they know now. <laughs> so is it different approaching the game coming into this year? Um, I, I, I would think it is a little bit as far as, you know, I, I know the, my responsibilities, I'm going to have a bit more responsibilities. I'm, I'm going to be a senior DB. I'm going to be the man on defense, so I know I have to kind of facilitate the defense on the field. I have to be the coach on the field. Yep. So I, I'm, as far as that, but I, it's it's still the same as far as, you know, I got to get a job done. Whoever's in front of me, just got to play. They got to get guarded. I love that you said, though, I got to set the tone now because I don't know if you're realizing this, bro, but 
there is a freshman or a sophomore that's like, ooh, I'm going to be two after him. Like, he, it's not Damari now. You, for you, it was Damari. For, for him, it's you. Yeah, like, yeah for him is 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 Zay. It's not he not looking at Damari. He not looking at Fagans. He looking at Zay. He like, hey, Zay wear the double sleeves, so I'm gonna wear the double sleeves. Like he got a visor. I'm aware. Like now it's you. Yes, so sir. I love that you that, that you look at that though, and you and, and you approach your game that way. Like okay, now I gotta I gotta set the standard because when I leave, somebody gonna wear this too, and he gotta he gotta uphold the standard. Now you gotta be the next one. So I love that you're approaching it that way. Yeah, I, I talked to my dad about that last year, kind of when things when I started actually realizing, you know, what was going on and <laughs> with football and I, it start, started to like click. I I told my dad, you know, it's crazy because a couple of months ago I was looking up to Damari like I, I was with him after practice, asking him, give me tips. And now it's it's the other way around. It's little it's kids, that look up to me, you know, after the games, I got little kids asking me for a, a signature gloves, everything Your gloves. So, yeah, so some kid like, hey, can I have your gloves? And you like these Damari gloves, fam. Like, I can't, <laughs> like, I, I took his. Like, hold on, let me. But that's that's the evolution, right? Yes, and sir. that's how American Heritage builds the dynasty y'all have. Is now it was his job to stay after practice and run M drills with you. Now it's your job to stay after practice and run them same drills. Bro, that mindset you got, that that's literally just leadership that that is being a leader a natural leader like that list of schools i named it's only going to get longer because of that not just the ball skills not just the physicality but that that intangible that you have in here and in here that's a that, that's a five star mentality you rivals 24/7 can put whatever they want on the skills the the young man being a five star that's why LSU calling that's why AM's calling. I guarantee you they calling each other like, have you talked to this young man? Because you 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 elude the, the, the maturity and you understand what you want out of this game. And you also understand that it takes work. So no matter who gets you, whatever fan base out there, they're getting legit a five star leader. And look, I obviously got my bias, but wherever it is, I know they're getting a dog. Coming up on this senior season, we cannot – I know I speak for everybody in the comments, everybody watching. We cannot wait to see what Heritage does this year, what you do on that defense. Let them know where they can follow you on Instagram and Twitter so that we can keep up with your year. And then after your senior year, we're going to have you back on so we can watch your senior highlights and do this again. Yes, sir. Um, everybody can follow me on Instagram at ZayThomas underscore and on Twitter at ZayThomas11. Uh, Go follow him now. If you're thinking, well, you didn't list my team. If they haven't offered him, they will. I promise you that. This is not a senior season you're going to want to miss. Go follow Zay right now. Like, comment, subscribe. We out.